Good morning. My name is Georgie Newby. I'm a flower farmer and florist based between fashionable Bruton and up and coming Wincanton here in very sunny today, Somerset. And it's early November, the 4th to be exact. So I thought we'd have a monthly tour of the garden. Normally I say to see what's in flower, but um, il n'y a pas grand chose. But I thought you might be interested to see how we manage the beds and what we're doing and how we're prepping for next year because, as I'm sure you know, uh, the winter in the garden, <laughs> especially when you're a flower farmer, is an opportunity to get very organised for next year. So I'm going to take you on a little tour of the garden and hope you enjoy it. If you do enjoy these clips, please do subscribe. There's a subscription button somewhere around. I have no idea where. And there's a bell icon that you can click and we'll tell you when we've got new clips coming up. And uh, if you like the tips and tricks I give you as we go along, then please do buy me a coffee. There's a link for coffee buying in the blurb for each of my clips. And obviously you're not buying me a real coffee. Uh, but uh, the small contributions that the coffee buying makes encourages me because it makes me think, oh, I'm doing the right thing. People are enjoying this and encourages me to make more clips. So we're all happy. Anyway, enough of this rambling. Let's get on. Look at that. That's what I call a tidy garden. Let's go and have a look at it in more detail. I have to say the tidy person in me really loves this time of year. Um, my house always looks like a bomb's hit it, but I really love these dark stripes of tidy beds and that gorgeous sugar maple on the left, which is absolutely in the wrong place. Um, and most of the year is quite a dull green, but for a week or two at this time of year, it's such an incredible colour that I never really regret having it. I can see it from my bedroom window in the mornings and it just fills the heart with joy. Um, another top tip, if you're designing a cut flower patch, you can come on workshops with me and I will tell you more about designing cut flower patches, but very, very important, I think, is to have a post exactly the right size to put your mug on. I drink a lot of coffee and a lot of tea. And this mug is by a lovely girl called Rachel Pedder smith who makes these beautiful designs. And I have lots of them because they are bone china very important to drink out of bone china but big enough to get pretty much half a pint of coffee in which is also important moving on uh, so as we clear our beds they get mulched with uh, dalefoot compost we don't make our own compost <laughs> because the compost heaps are filled with too many people living in them um, or at least that's what my other half Fabrizio says so our compost making is very not really we make heaps of horticultural debris everywhere for the toads and the um, hedgehogs and we order our compost from Dalefoot in Cumbria which is not far away from where my parents live which makes me happy so I feel like we're putting a bit of put a bit of Cumbria on the beds and um, of course it's peat free it's very important that we garden with feet peat free compost these days as using peat based compost is not sustainable fact um here <laughs> this was the scary fellow tied up to the front for halloween and he's now become a <laughs> poor thing he's gone come down in the world rather and he's now a scarecrow but he's quite amusing to look at and this is the uh structure that we grew the cobia scandens up um as you can see it's a very strong structure and it will be moved shortly to where the cobia scandens will grow next year um cobia scandens gets very heavy which is why we have such a strong structure for it to grow up um anyway that's ready to be moved and here you can see we call this rotavation the rotavator uh, is here and uh, we are sort of dig gardeners not strict no dig but not strict dig either and when a bed has been used for several years we are on very very thick clay 
and I want to put the tulips in here and I want to put the tulips in quickly. And so that's why we rotate the patch where the tulips will go. There will also be an enormous amount of uh, compost going in to keep these beds nice and friable and easy to work because after the tulips next year will come the dahlias so there we go and in the distance there is Fabrizio uh, who is raking in where he rotated yesterday making space for tulips there so we've got four and a half thousand tulips coming and most of the empty patches in these beds will be filled by them. The tulips are on their way. I've had an email. <laughs> Not sure it's a threat or a promise. But anyway, guess what I'm doing this weekend? The green here to flower along with the tulips. Things like honesty. Slightly dumped on top of, but I expect it to live. And there are the foxgloves over there more foxgloves are very keen on foxgloves um wallflowers sweet william sweet rocket lots of biennials to flower along with the along <laughs> along with the tulips and afterwards so the spring is sort of happening already in my head um i'm one of those people i kind of obsess slightly about uh, not so much about what I've got flowering now, but what I'm going to have flowering in the future. And so long as I feel as though I've got the future organised, then all will be well. <sighs> not so much flowering, but how are the... <laughs> Look at the crab apples. These are going on my Christmas wreaths. Um, this is a variety called Red Sentinel. And I know I sort of mention it practically every time I make a clip. But you can see why. It keeps its fruit on till Christmas. There you go. Makes me and the birds happy. In the greenhouse, we have the sweet peas. And they're all ready for being pricked out. And soon I'll plant them into the holly tunnel. I've got three trays of them. So that's 90 something plants. And this is where the sweet peas will go. I expect I'll do a special video when I do it. Uh, but for the moment, here is their own very own smart tunnel along with a bit more honesty this is lovely white honesty um which is a particular favorite of mine and those remaining seed heads i've, I've gathered lots of them but i need to gather a few more as you can see because they'll be great in my christmas wreaths this bed is full of bulbs in the spring all the way down here on the left that's a great big long row of wild bluebells, for example. Hyacinthoides non scripta. At the end, there's a little orchard. It's called the Gilly Orchard because my mum gave us the trees. And here, as you can see, we've left the Verbena bonariensis and the beloved blue bog sage, Salvia uglinosa. And they will stay there all winter and I won't cut them down until the spring because they provide masses of cover for birds and insects to overwinter. And also the birds really love, sometimes I come down here in the winter and there are clouds of goldfinches feeding on the seed heads. So I will leave those ready for the spring. Bronze fennel, <laughs> phlox. I might split a bit of this phlox for next year because I have lots and I love it. Look at the willow colouring up. I haven't cut any yet, but I will do next week because the leaves are all coming off. Now we've had a couple of good frosts and this is the willow that we make our reeds out of. Do join me. I have several wreathing workshops coming up online, um, demos, and you can book a place on those. And equally, if you're in the UK, we send bundles of this willow uh, for planting so that you too can have a little willow copse which you can then use to harvest from as time goes by. It's important if you're going to strike willow in your garden that the space where you're going to strike it is relatively damp and it is uh, not 
going to they're quite they get big you need a bit of space unless you're going to really pull out them hard so um by all means order some but make sure you've got the right space for them first the willow herb seed heads here also very very good for the birds during the winter and the reason we have so many goldfinches is because of these willow herb seed heads so do think if you're clearing your garden to leave something for the birds to eat it's amazing to think that only four daily <laughs> days ago there were four big beds of dahlias in full flower here but they've all been gone been and gone the, they've been lifted the tops have been composted we had that lovely frost which really knocked them out it's nice to have a definitive frost and um, these beds are now ready to be sorted out for next year onwards and upwards uh, this is the only thing that's really properly in flower in november here and good old rosa bonica she just is such a workhorse in the garden and she makes lovely little orange hips um i could cut her i could still cut her but everything else has sort of had it so my season is over i finish my season officially at the end of september although i do then end up cutting all the way through october but um the colour in here is really fantastic um, and a lot of this will come in and be dried material or used for Christmas wreaths um, like the grasses over there and even though the hydrangeas look a bit bashed and battered from here I will rootle around inside them and find the good ones for my Christmas wreaths there will be good ones and then in the distance we have colour when we first came here, you could see cars driving along the lane at the end. Not anymore. That's what happens when you plant a tree. This is the view I often post on my Instagram. And um, those poplars at the end, we planted, we struck little sticks. They were given us by a neighbour. And we struck them in the ground about 14 years ago. And now they're 100 foot high, I should think. Um, the rope is just to continue the deer fencing which is there going along all the way and we have rabbit fencing in the gate you see it there and all the way along because we don't want the rabbits to come and eat the flowers they can eat other things there's plenty here for rabbits to eat and you can see that this patch very like the patch where I'm about to plant the tulips also has gaps in it and that's my job is to rationalize those gaps make sure that we're not growing a lot of empty space make sure that everything we grow is useful and that I will cut it anything we don't cut I really often will lift it and chuck it in the compost because unless it's that that's the deal here is that Everything we cut has to make us a living, um, as well as feed the environment. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this clip. If you have, please subscribe to the channel uh, and press the bell icon, which is somewhere around, um, so that we'll tell you when we have new clips coming out. If you have found any of the tips and tricks useful, uh, then do please buy me a coffee, or even if you've just enjoyed it. <laughs> and want to support me making new clips please do buy me a coffee the link is in the blurb to each clip and um i hope look i'm arranging this i'm supposed to be arranging this so you can see that beautiful uh red acer at the end there everything's dropping its leaves very quickly but oh just for a minute the color has been amazing anyway thanks very much for watching uh that's my garden in november <laughs> i will see you again soon bye oh yeah soon we're going to be planting tulips so i expect i'll make a film about planting tulips this weekend if the tulips arrive they're on their way it's thursday oh hyperventilating bye